All right, now, believe it or not, we've sort of done it. If we go back to the main page for our app here, uh, you'll see that we actually have this um, this page, HTTPS page, called the Canvas page uh, in the Facebook settings. And that is actually a URL that will show us our app on Facebook. I'm going to paste that into the browser bar and hit Enter. Um, I, at the top, you notice I get a warning that I am not using secure browsing. If I turn secure browsing on, I will not be able to see my app because it is not a secure app, which is not within the scope of this tutorial. So I'm just going to ignore that message, and you may get that message other places in the site. But what you see here is I basically have wrapped my own web pages in the Facebook canvas, and I can go ahead and fill out things about my um, my own um, app form, and they will happen, uh, although they'll still be within the Facebook canvas. Um, it's a little irritating, because I might have these scroll bars here, which could be uh, irritating, but there are ways to um, get rid of those that we're not actually going to cover right now. But, um, but that's not really uh, making use of the Facebook um, platform very well, because although we have wrapped our own web pages in Facebook, we haven't really interacted with Facebook at all. So that's what we'll... Uh, that's what we'll cover next. So to actually make this app interact with Facebook in a meaningful way, I am going to use some PHP code from the Facebook developer site. So I'm going to go back to developers.facebook.com. I'm going to click on the Build Apps on Facebook button. Uh, and then on the left here, there's a number of samples under Samples and How-Tos. But just for simplicity, I think the easiest way is to actually go to the Software Development Kit Reference, SDK Reference. Um, once I click on that, it tells me that it has a Software Development Kit for PHP, which means that there is sample code for PHP. I'm going to click on that, uh, and in here it tells me you can download the Facebook PHP code from GitHub here. So I'm going to click on that here to download the code. GitHub is a little confusing, but what you want is this Downloads button on the right um, that my mouse is hovering over, and then you want to download it as a zip file. Uh, it went ahead and downloaded it. If I double-click on that zip file, uh, what I'll see in the zip file is uh, a directory, and then in that directory uh, it will have an examples folder, a source code folder, a test folder, and some other information. Um, but really, the, the thing that is in interest to me is in this source folder, there are two files, base Facebook PHP and Facebook PHP. And these files contain a bunch of code that will make my app work with Facebook. So I'm going to take those, I'm going to reopen WinSCP, uh, and then I'm actually just going to drag base Facebook and Facebook uh, into my directory that I created on my web server. That didn't work because I forgot to unzip these first, so I'm actually going to drag them to um, the desktop instead. Sorry about that. And Facebook. Uh -huh. uh, I'm also going to grab this thing un called example.php because we're going to that's going to have some useful stuff in it. So now I have these three files. Uh, now I'm going to drag them uh, onto my web server. Great. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look in this example.php file that I downloaded from Facebook. I'm opening it in Notepad++ by double-clicking, and there's a bunch of PHP stuff in here at the top. Basically what this file is doing is it's talking to Facebook for me, so I don't have to worry about it. And then it's got a little simple web page that gives me some examples of things you might do with the Facebook API. But just for the sake of getting something going quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the entire top of this file so everything uh, in between the start PHP and stop PHP tags before the HTML starts. I'm just going to copy everything out of there, and then I'm going to open my own um, .html file and I'm going to just throw that script at the top of my file so that now I have a script at the top that talks to Facebook for me. Um, I'm going to save it 
I have to do a couple of things to make this work. I'm going to save it, uh, and then I'm going to rename it. Instead of .html, I'm going to rename it .php, because I've put PHP code in it. So now it is not just an HTML file. And I want the server to execute that PHP code when people look at the page. Um, the next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go back to Facebook. I'm going to have to go back to the Facebook developer app. Um, for whatever test app, remember, and uh, I need to look up the secret for my app and the key for my app. So these two strings of numbers and letters I need to take out of this page and to put in my code so that I can send them to Facebook and it knows that it's really me that's asking it these questions. Um, so I'm going to start by taking the API key by just copying that. Um, then I'm going to go back, not to uh, example, but to... Um, index.php, which was the uh, file that I created that I just added this uh, code to the top of. I'm going to find where the app ID and the secret is at the top of the file. I'm going to replace the, the examples with uh, numbers that are actually the numbers that relate to my application. So, okay, and I'm going to save it. I almost forgot, I need to wait, make one other change, and that's that there's a new statement we haven't worked with before called require. What require does is it takes another script and it includes it in your script. So basically it's as though I were executing the script in this other file, and that's the file I downloaded from Facebook. Remember it was called facebook.php. Well, you need two files like that. And this require says I want to require uh, another script of PHP, and it's going to be one directory up and in the source directory. Well, I moved it. I put it in the same directory as this one, so I'm just going to get rid of that um, prefix there and then save the file. So, um, all right. Now, if I go back to this um, Facebook uh, developer's app that gives me information about my app, I should be able to copy the Canvas page, which is the page where my app lives, and look at it, and hopefully my app will work. All right, it worked. So basically what happened is that the uh, API code that I added to the top of my page was executed, but it didn't produce any errors. But since we know it's executed in there, now we can actually add PHP that interacts with Facebook in some way. We're almost there now. There's one thing we have to do before we are ready to go with this app. You've experienced that page where when you want to use a new app, it asks you if it's okay to look at your user data. Well, we actually need to do that as well. Um, since it's kind of a pain in the butt to design your own process to do that, we're just going to use the one that's in the example.php file that uh, we downloaded from Facebook. So that means that we need to replace the app ID and the secret uh, key just as we did for the previous file. I did that already for this, so you, you, you don't, uh, aren't going to watch me do that. Um, so we're just going to be sure that it's our app ID and our secret key. I'm also going to change the require statement so that it points to the place where I downloaded facebook.php. So the same three steps I made for my own index.php, I'm going to do with the example.php file. So since our, um, since our uh, Facebook app is really just a set of web pages wrapped uh, around uh, with some Facebook content on the outside, we can actually browse our directory on our own web server by adding the path to a particular file after it. So I added example.php after the URL to my app, and this is what the example does. It's pretty ugly. It doesn't really do anything that interesting. But one thing it does that's helpful for us is it allows you to authenticate yourself with the app. So I'm going to click Login with Facebook. Oh, that didn't work very well. I'm actually, oh, no, it worked. It just took a second. All right, I'm going to click Login with Facebook. It's going to think about it for a while, and then it's going to say, uh, this app will receive your basic information. Um, your friends can see posts this app makes for you on your Facebook timeline. Do you want to do that? And you say you do. Go to the app. Uh, and then it gives you this rather unhelpful page, but it doesn't matter. What we've done is we've just authorized the app to work with Facebook. So I can actually use the back button to go back to my Facebook app on Facebook, and this is the same example page that I looked at before, 
but you notice the page has now changed. It has a bunch more information on it, including my own profile picture and information about me, um, like what school I go to and things like that. So uh, if you want to know what kinds of things you can do with the Facebook um, PHP code, you could look at this example.php page and see how it refers to this information. For now, let's just do one really simple thing. Let's go back to our main um, Facebook app page. So to get back to our main Facebook app page, I'll just go to uh, apps.facebook.com slash that, that key. Uh, and remember, what we have on this page is we pasted in that PHP script at the top, but it doesn't do anything yet. It's logging us, it's talking to Facebook, but we haven't asked it to actually produce any information. So it's just the same quiz that I started with right now. But let's just do a little demo to show what you might do with Facebook. To do that, I'm going to go, I'm going to edit the index.php. So again, the whole top part up here is just the stuff I copied out of example.php. I changed the app ID, I changed the secret, I changed the path to the require. Uh, now, let's go to the, the text I wrote. So this is the text I wrote for assignment six. Um, that's just a, a web page form that asks you questions. And let's see if I can put in some information um, that's going to be uh, draw on the power of the Facebook app to do something that we couldn't otherwise do. I'm just going to do something really simple. And I figured out how to do this by copying um, examples from the example.php, the, the Facebook one that I downloaded. So I'm going to start by adding a PHP block. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I, I'm going to put a, an if statement in a small PHP block here. Uh, and this if user uh, is basically telling PHP um, if the Facebook um, app has successfully um, has successfully um, logged into Facebook and is communicating with Facebook, then um, execute the code that comes after this. Um, you might not have seen this syntax before. It's an alternate version of the syntax of the if else. Um, it's using a colon instead of the parentheses. So basically what happens in this section will happen only if there is a user logged into Facebook. And if not, we will execute this section. So I'm just going to put a little note here that says, um, you are not logged into Facebook. I could put a link to a login page if I was well, careful, but this is just a quick demo. And then here, um, I think what I want to do is I'm going to put an image, uh, and the source to the image will be the Facebook Graph API. Um, and then I'm going to echo to the Facebook Graph API uh, the user that I am. And I'm going to request my own picture. Uh, so basically, this should show a picture of me, unless I made a typo, if I'm logged in. If I'm not logged in, uh, it should show the message, you are not logged in. I'm going to wrap this in paragraph tag to make it look a little nicer. Um, According to the HTML5 specification, all images should have alt text. I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go back and reload this page. I hope I didn't make any typos. And there it is, you see. So it has retrieved that information from the user variable that I got because my script is communicating with Facebook. If I wanted to include information from Facebook, on all my pages, I would need to add that code at the top with the app ID and the secret. Uh, and I would need to be sure that the require is working properly. So this is this code at the top, the require, the app ID, and the secret. And then I should be able to paste in the body of my um, HTML. I should be able to put PHP scripts that refer to values I can only obtain if I'm logged into Facebook. Remember, there's one limitation with this approach. And that is that it's only going to work uh, if I am listed on the Facebook apps page as a developer for this app. So if you have a team and you're working on um, a project together, so if we go back to the developer app, 
if you have a team and you're working on a project together, you'll need to add your other team members in here as roles so that they can also see your app. Because currently, since it's in sandbox mode, only the people who created the app or have been authorized as developers can use the app. So not everyone can do it. But in other respects, it should work the same way as a regular app. Um, so we should be able to test and demo it, and it will work exactly like a regular app. So you see here it appears as an app I recently used in the left sidebar of my Facebook homepage. And I can actually add it to favorites, and then my app appears up here as a favorite, and I can go to it whenever I want to by clicking on that favorite. Um, so it works just as though it were a regular Facebook app, but because it's in sandbox mode and it's not secure, I, I can only see it because I'm a developer or I've been authorized to see it. So you'll have to do that yourself um, if you want to demo your app. So this concludes um, our presentation about Facebook apps. I hope this is useful to you. And if you have any questions, um, the best resource is probably that developer website that I started with at the beginning. It has a lot of screenshots, and it's really um, quite easy. You can do a lot with this Facebook API. So have fun. Look forward to seeing all of your apps.